probably verses 20 through verse 21. I want to look at two different points this afternoon. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says, Likewise, you husbands, doil with them, your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Amen. Um, sure, that's not preached in a lot of churches nowadays, that your prayers could actually be hindered. Amen. Amen. But it's a New Testament text there. Verse 8 says, Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brother. Be pitiful, pitiful. Be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary-wise, blessing for those things. Knowing that you are therein too called and that you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto the prayers, to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them which do evil. Amen. Again. That's something that's not preached in a lot of churches nowadays. That second part there of verse 12 that where it says, the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. Now I want you to understand we're in New Testament here, okay? We're in New Testament. We're talking um, about those that are under grace, yet at the same time have turned against the Lord or doing evil, and not only that, but the sinners also. And it says... And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are you. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Amen? Right. Encouraging verse here. The Lord is uh, telling us through Peter here. says, but, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, right. which we're starting to see more and more and more of that, is, uh, across the world, and now even in America, amen, and it's just going to get worse, amen, it's just going to get worse, but if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, amen, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, excuse me, that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Amen? Right. Well, I'm sure my pastors felt a lot of this as certain of his social media accounts have been terminated, been put in jail a few times, been closed, and we as, uh, a lot of us Christians have suffered the same things. Amen? That we have a good conscience like it was in verse 16. And we speak, uh, they speak evil of us as evildoers. Even though our conversation is good conversation in Christ. Amen. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. The just for the unjust that he might bring it to us to God being put to death in the, in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached and the spirits in, unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, within a, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure wherein too even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 22, who has gone into heaven is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. I want to hit uh, several things in that long text I just read this afternoon. I want to summarize it really quick, amen. First, I really want us to hit that fact that our prayers can be hindered, amen. Amen. 
I've got a brother that is very sacred to me, he attends this church sometimes, and I wish he would here this evening so he could hear this encouraging word. And he's, he's really discouraged about the, uh, all, uh, the many prophets that are prophesied about Trump winning a, a second term and about, you know, prophesying that this stuff that's coming to pass now about, you know, bringing abortion forward quicker and bringing this uh, uh, gay lifestyle ahead quicker and, and being ever so quickly progressive. And um, there were so many prophets that prophesied that it wouldn't happen this quickly and that Trump would get elected. He was, he was asking questions like, how would it be that these would prophesy this, you know? And it may be that there are false prophets, yet it might be also, if we think about it, the Lord many times in the Old Testament would make, uh, would make prophecy through His prophets. And then He would, re would repent of those prophecies. Also, he would give promises to the children of Israel many times through prophets. And then he would repent of the prophecies he gave them. Amen? For example, he, he, would say, uh, he said, told them, I'm going to take you into the promised land that was promised to your fathers. That's what the Lord prophesied to those, right? And if you'll remember, they had to wander in the wilderness, every one of them dying off, and not being able to go into the promised land because of the sins they'd committed. Amen? Right. And we got to remember that, so, you know, old Jonah went to Nineveh. The Lord said, I want you to go to Nineveh. Tell Nineveh that I'm going to destroy the place. Right. And I'm going to destroy everybody in it. And Nineveh went to, uh, or Jonah went to Nineveh and said, the Lord is going to destroy this place and everybody in it. And the people repented. And God repented. And even though God prophesied through Jonah that I'm going to destroy this place, He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Right. Amen? And we need to understand that a lot of times prophecies are to bring about a result, but it can also bring about a witness. Amen? We need to understand that a lot of our prayers that were prayed up about making sure this country doesn't go in this direction were hindered by the sins that we fostered in our lives. I mean, I hate to spit this kind of doctrine because it's not popular. However, you'll find time and time and time and time again throughout the Bible, New and Old Testament, where it tells us that sin will prohibit us, will prohibit God from hearing our prayers. Amen? Right, right. That it will cause a disconnect between us and Him. Many times it's mentioned in the Bible. And it may be that a lot of us kind of got content, you know? We thought we were okay, you know? As somebody and I were talking the other day, it all of a sudden became okay to even say Merry Christmas. You remember for six or seven years, we weren't supposed to say Merry Christmas, you know? And all of a sudden, it feels like that's being taken away from us. And it may be because our prayers are hindered. We've got so much sin that our prayers just getting, aren't getting through. Amen? Right. Or it might be that the Lord prophesied through these prophets about Trump possibly getting another term. And he repented of that because I know lots of Christians, professed Christians, and maybe um, even true Christians, that were so, were so full of sin. Amen? So full of sin. Condoning things they should not be condoning. Right. Not just condoning it, but encouraging things that they should not have been encouraging. And not only condoning and encouraging, but going to individuals and trying to uplift them for that. Preaching against repentance, preaching against hell even, even preaching against those things which John the Baptist came and say, preaching against even what Jesus Christ him would say, himself would say, amen, in the name of preserving culture and etc. and so forth. Maybe it is that many of us Christians kind of turned our back on God right. over the last three or four years. Yeah. And maybe even though God sent a man who, in my opinion, was, not, uh, was definitely not a pastoral person, amen, yet at the same time he paved the way for a lot of us Christians, amen, to get a little bit of our freedoms to go and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though that man was put there by God, maybe God had decided, well, if this is the way the people want it, I'm going to turn it over to them. 
And I heard somebody, when I mentioned this here a while back, he said, well, how is it that 72 or 76 million people voted for the man? Well, I hate to say it, many of those were not Christian folks. Amen? I just wonder how many of the Christian folks actually went out and voted. Amen? Against abortion. Went out and voted against homosexuality. Went out and voted against persecution of Christians. Went out and voted against all this stuff that we're being faced with right now. Amen? But instead, I wonder how many of them sat back and said, well, you know, he speaks with a hard mouth, so we've got to get him out of office. You know? And how many people just stood by and said, you know, well, you know, because he told a few lies, that, that is worse than killing some baby. That is worse than committing abominous acts before the Lord, you know. And I just wonder how many Christians had made that decision that God, we don't care what you say. We want it our way. Amen. And I just wonder if maybe we decide, not we, but the, some of the church had decided that they didn't want it God's way. Right. They didn't want to go the direction God had set up. They wanted to go a different way. Right. And God stepped aside and said, well, if that's the way you want it, that's the way it'll be. Kind of like, as I said just a minute ago, the Israelites wandering in the wilderness. You know, He basically said, being that you people want to uh, turn your back on Me every time you get, you get a chance, I'm not going to let you go into the promised land. Right. You know? And he said he brought forth his promise to their descendants, to their heirs. Amen. And we need to understand these things. Amen. And we need to make sure we don't have sin in our lives. Make sure that God can hear our prayers. I worry about a lot of Christians today that are praying because they have been taught that you should not repent. I mean, honestly, this is being taught. I heard a pastor say one time that repentance is no longer needed. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross, we no longer have to repent. We no longer have to say we're sorry. We no longer have to. And I don't know where he gets that from the Scripture because that is not scriptural. And we have many Christians that have that attitude of, I don't have to change who I am. I don't have to strive to be better. I don't have to be sanctified. I don't have to try to be holy as He is holy. I don't have to do whatever. I can do evil things and God will still hear my prayer. Yet I read the Scripture just a minute ago, did I not? That He said that their prayers weren't heard because of evil things. And it says that God is for the righteous but He is against those that are doing evil. Now, if you believe that He's not against uh, people that are doing evil just because they believe in Jesus Christ, you're sorely mistaken. Right. God is against evil regardless who commits the evil. Right. God hates sin regardless of who commits it. And God will deliver judgment regardless of who did it. Amen? Right. You know, a uh, strange scripture here um, where it says that um, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen? And the scripture tells us they will each give an account for every idle word that we're spoken. Isn't it in interesting there that it says every, every, every? It doesn't say the sinners. It doesn't say those that are not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. It says every, as in every, folks, means we're going to have to stand before the Lord and give a testament to the words we've done and the deeds we've done. Right. Amen? And praise the Lord. We can go to the Lord and say, Lord, I repented. Forgive me. I repented. And I put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. I quit doing it, Lord. Right. Amen? And then Satan no longer has that railing accusation that he's going to try to come against you. Right. But there will be others that stand up there and they'll say, well, didn't Jesus die for, 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 for my sins? And God's reply is probably going to be, yes, He died for your sins, but He did not die for you to sin. Right. That's where people got this thing mixed up. They think that Jesus Christ died so I can sin. Jesus Christ did not die so you can sin. Right. Jesus Christ died so that if you were to sin, He would forgive you if you repent. Because He's that sacrifice. Amen? So, again, as I said just a minute ago, we need to be careful 
about making sure we don't have sin in our lives because that will hinder our relationship with God. Right. And the last thing I want to talk about for just a few minutes that I wanted to hit out of the Scripture tonight, in verse 17, I love this Scripture. It says, It's better to suffer for good instead of suffering for bad. Amen? Amen. Right. right now, a lot of Christian people are suffering and being persecuted and being labeled and being criticized and being called all manner of different things. As I was watching on TV uh, here a while back, where somebody said, well, my parents were evangelical Christians. And they said it was like the worst thing ever, you know, to be an evangelical Christian. Yep. Folks, we're living in a day where that's considered a bad thing. You know, we're living in a day right now where our government wants to shut down all conservative stations, radio stations, TV stations. And I hate to burst your bubble, Christians out there, but... Christianity is a conservative idea. Amen? The fact that Jesus Christ is a Savior, that's a conservative idea. And if you've got the, uh, if you've got the ignorant mind to believe that they're just going to shut down stations like... Uh, and I don't mean to make this political, I'm just trying to help you understand what's going on now. If you think they're only going to shut down Republican news stations or Fox News or whatever, I want you to understand... The church is coming next. Amen? Right. And this is a plan not necessarily to attack so-called conservatives. This is a plan to shut down Christians. Yeah. Because, well, Brother Lee, why wouldn't they say that? Because if they came out and said, hey, I'm going to shut down all this Christian religion, then the Christians would stand up. But if they stand back and say, we're going to shut down conservatives... Are you with me here? Right. They speak evil of the good things. And they speak good of the evil things. Right. And we need to understand that this thing is happening. Now, I want to uplift you for just a minute, though. Sure, we're suffering persecution right now. And we're going to be suffering a lot more, probably, in the upcoming days, right. the upcoming years. However... I want you to have a little hope in this Scripture here because God says it's better to suffer for something good than it is to suffer for something bad. Right. Amen. Because, you know, there's a lot of bad things that, that people do and causes themselves a lot of suffering, a lot of bad things we do. Amen. Right. But if we suffer, I'd rather suffer for doing something right. right. Amen. 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 For example, you know, I, I, you know, my pastor and I preach on a lot of things and we get labeled a lot of things and we get criticized as a lot of things, you know. We do. And we, but at the same time, if, for example, let's take abstinence, all right? Abstinence is a, is, a, is, is a very holy thing before the Lord. Preserving yourself for marriage. Amen? It's a good thing. And it is better for you to suffer because you've decided to keep yourself for marriage and they will criticize you for that than it is, on the other hand, to not save yourself for marriage and get some kind of STD. Get pregnant too early. Amen? Or whatever it may be that results from you being frivolous. Amen? Better for you to suffer for the good than it is to suffer for the bad. Amen? It is better for you to suffer to stand up and say, hey, I am a Christian and Jesus Christ is the way to heaven than to stand around and say, well, you know, I believe that all roads take you to God and that they're all the same, same God. And then you find yourself finding yourself later looking up from the pits of hell because you defended a false religion. Right. Amen? Right. In closing, you guys, I don't necessarily feel like I was preaching to the choir tonight. I think we're all guilty sometimes of the things that I was speaking tonight. Let's just make sure we don't have any evil going on in our lives. Let's make sure that we're not trying to harbor any sins. Amen? Right. And I understand that can disconnect us from God. And as we get ready to suffer for being Christians and for standing up for what's right, right. let's go ahead and understand that, it's be that it is better to suffer from the good than it is to give in and do the bad or support the bad and suffer for that. Amen. Amen. With that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Pastor. An awesome word, brother. Appreciate you preaching, man. All right.
There we go. All right. Well, guys, that's an awesome word. Uh,